everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Jenna Van Maurick and I'm an author and a reader of Christian fiction and Christian historical fiction and today I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about publishing my sequel and publishing my second book which I did earlier this year and what kind of some of the differences were between publishing my first book and my debut uh, versus my second one. So let's get was called Jerusalem's Daughter and it was my debut. I self-published it in 2021 in March and it is an ancient historical fiction kind of similar to Ben-Hur if you're very familiar with like Ben-Hur um, and that story, the book or the movie um, with Charlton Heston or any of its modern adaptations since then. And it takes place during the Passion Week and it is one family's kind of experience of what the Passion Week would have looked like from the perspective of people, just ordinary people that lived through it and how, you know, Jesus really did transform ordinary people's lives. And my second book was called Antioch's Daughter and it is a direct sequel to Jerusalem's Daughter and it features um, the main character is one of the side characters in the first book but all grown up and uh, it follows her journey after after the Passion Week and after the church was established um, when the church was scattered because of the stoning of Stephen and persecution that was happening in Jerusalem and how the believers kind of became scattered throughout the land and particularly the ones that went north to Antioch which is in the Bible the place where the disciples were first called Christians and one of the places where um, the word had already begun being preached to Gentiles as well as Jews and kind of what that transition looked like and what that period of early church growth would have looked like from the perspective of again ordinary people because for me that's something that is so fascinating is just thinking about what these big Bible events would have looked like from the perspective of ordinary people. Um, and, you know, I find that there is a lot of inspiration that we can draw from that today. And this is true of all Christian historical fiction novels that I've read. There's just so much wisdom that we can learn for today by looking back at um, what life would have been like yesterday. This book came out this year in 2023 in the month of June and I had a small little kind of release day party for it and I will pop up some of those pictures on the screen right now for you guys and I'll probably show a few more later on in the video um, or throughout the video in general but it was so much fun. We just invited just a handful of family and friends over to kind of celebrate and pray over the story and um, that it would reach the people it needed to reach and it was really such a fun day. Writing my first book was really interesting because while I knew I wanted to be a published author one day, that was like a dream of mine. When I wrote Jerusalem's Daughter, I had no plans of publishing it. I didn't write it to self-publish it. I didn't write it necessarily to traditionally publish it. I wrote it with the expectation that I was going to write it and then I was going to edit it and edit it and edit it and edit it and edit it. <laughs> and then eventually I would kind of pursue publication, whether that meant querying and finding an agent or self-publishing. But actually at the time I had no intention of self publishing because that really intimidated me and my how the tables have turned but really it was just me and my husband I was just married we were living in a tiny little apartment and um, he worked full-time and I was in college and we were kind of just you know settling into life it was our first time living away from family um, because of work and jobs and college and all that kind of stuff and you know, I was really lonely <laughs> that during that time um, because my husband would go to work and I didn't have any friends or family in the area yet. So I filled my time just by sitting and writing and working on my story. And looking back on that time is so special for me because I would write and I would be excited to write and I was very self-motivated to write, but there was just absolutely no external pressure on that whatsoever. I would turn on a little lamp in our apartment and I would just like get cozy, light a candle and work on my book. I ended up finishing the first draft of that book in NaNoWriMo of the year 2018, which is National Novel Writing Month that happens every year in November, but people have adapted it to basically mean so many different things. And then over the course of the next several years while I was finishing college, I edited it. I worked with editors for the first time, which was crazy. And, um, and then eventually I kind of did an interview with the I did an interview with an author project here on YouTube and over the course of interviewing other authors and picking people's brains, I kind of 
then got more direction on which route I wanted to take, which did become self-publishing. And that's when things really kicked into high gear and I started hitting or setting deadlines for myself and um, really making like a detailed plan because something about me is that I never really go into anything halfway. And um, I made like this detailed week by week plan of all the things I needed to do each week in order to publish that book successfully on time. And then I published that book and it was amazing and it was a wonderful experience and publishing that book because it was my debut I did a lot of things differently than I did for my sequel so for publishing my first book I ordered a lot of merch <laughs> um, I ordered a lot of promotional materials bookmarks postcards uh, pens keychains all this kind of just different swag I guess for the book and I sent it out to all different people I sent postcards to everyone in my address book letting them know hey I wrote a book it's coming out this is what it's called I sent out invitations to family friends uh, friends from work friends from church for a launch party that I was going to be having um, an actual like event launch party that I was going to be happy having and um, I sent stuff out to bookstagrammers I assembled like a team of reviewers a launch team and um, really it was honestly <sighs> I'm getting exhausted just thinking about that time in my life because I really really tried so hard and I was trying so hard to be successful and to publish successfully to gain traction for my debut because when you're self-published and also when you're traditionally published but speaking specifically from self-publishing because that's what I know you do all of your own marketing it's your responsibility to kind of gain traction and and put steam in that engine and get the ball rolling I would say that it paid off I you know I had a, a few successes there um, in terms of sales and I made enough money to pay myself back for the cost of editing and cover design. Once I published this book though I had literally no clue what was coming next. I had a clue of what I wanted to come next but not quite what was coming next. In terms of planning for this book I kind of did what you're not supposed to do which is um, publish one book without really having a plan for the sequel because of course people are going to want the sequel. If you do a good job publishing your first book people will get excited and they're gonna want the next one as soon as possible and while I had kind of a plan um, I didn't quite have all the details maybe as fleshed out as I should have. I had a relatively vague idea of what this book was gonna be like. I had a very basic skeleton outline of like the bare bones of this story and beyond that didn't really have much to go on and what I did not anticipate from publishing this book was just the amount of extreme anxiety that would come for me regarding my writing post publishing this book so once I published that book you know writing Jerusalem's daughter I was writing it in my apartment by myself writing my second book was a completely different experience not because there were so many people that didn't like my first book and I felt like a failure but actually because of the positive reviews so let me kind of explain this reviews are great reviews help authors a lot um, reviews help sell books they help sellers and retailers know when to carry when to stock when to promote your book for you all of these kinds of things reviews are so 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 important and as someone who started out book reviewing before I moved into the writing space and public my own book. I know what it takes to write a review and I know you know what goes into being on the review side of that and how much fun it is to just geek out and share your excitement about a story. What I didn't expect though was even positive reviews can cause you to have anxiety. So this is definitely a personal preference thing and everyone is different. Some authors can read their reviews and like to read their reviews. Other authors can't read their reviews or don't read their reviews or other authors have somebody a third party go through the reviews and pick out out the good stuff and give that to the author in a way that they can digest so that they can learn from that or grow or you know whatever I found that it was the hardest for me to read positive reviews because it made me have this insane sense of pressure to then live up to that positive review in the next book. Anytime I would sit down to write a chapter or a scene or work on my story I would write something and then I would think about oh well this reviewer and I would remember their names this reviewer said that they really liked the family dynamic so how do I know that I'm writing a good enough family dynamic for this reviewer will they like it again in this book you know oh this reviewer talked about um, 
historical detail and setting and, and, and world building and descriptions. What if this description isn't good enough and then they don't like it? And I would remember reviewers by name and I would remember their reviews. And this is not to say, please don't review my book. I want you to review my book if you read it. But um, what it is to say is that unexpectedly, even the positive reviews affected my brain in such a way that I learned it was better for me not to read my reviews myself because even the positive ones affected how I wrote going forward. I would be writing for that review and then it would cripple me because I wouldn't be writing for my own creativity and I wouldn't be writing for the good of the story and I would just be writing for what people would think about it. Because of that, I wasn't necessarily true to the story or true to the characters or what they needed and I had to keep starting over because I would get to roadblocks and I cannot tell you how many times I just deleted the document and scrapped it and I was like, okay. With the exception of this one scene that I know is really, really good, we're going back to square one. Of course, there's a certain amount of like, write for your market, write for your genre, but ultimately you shouldn't be writing the story for anyone except for yourself and for your characters and what makes sense for your characters and the story you're trying to tell. And all of those other things can come later in beta reading and editing and critique partners and getting feedback. That's what feedback is for. But you can't be worrying about feedback that hasn't even been written yet while you're still in the drafting phase. So I was starting over and over and over again, and I was also trying to market book one, so my attention was kind of divided between two spaces, really. And on top of that, I was dealing with a lot of personal um, crises at the time in my life, all kinds of things, and, and spiritual battles that I was going through too, um, with work and jobs and, um, just a lot of different life stuff that made it really, really hard. I felt like I was being really hit on all sides. All I can really say is that this book was not written without tears. A lot of tears were shed in the writing of this book, but I wouldn't change anything about the writing process for this book because I feel like I really grew so much and I learned so much about myself, about God, and more than anything, I learned that at the end of the day, I am writing stories for him and not for anyone or anything else or any accolades or awards. I'm just writing because I want to bring glory to God and I write stories that remind me of how amazing he is. I had to work Work through writer's block and I had to work through imposter syndrome and I had to work through anxiety and all of those things not to say that I will never struggle with those things again in my career as a writer which will hopefully go on for many 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 more years after today but I felt like writing this book kind of armored me in a certain way to be an even stronger writer and a stronger author and just a stronger person who came out of the experience with a lot more confidence in myself and in Christ because ultimately I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and it's through his strength that I was able to complete this, not my own. Then it came time to publishing and here's the thing. I was sitting on this book for a while before it eventually got published. With Jerusalem's Daughter, I got to the point where I was like, I'm ready to publish it and that was it. I just launched right into the publishing phase. With Antioch's Daughter, I was ready to publish it and I set a goal and then life happened. And then I set another goal and, and, and more things just kept popping up to where I had this finished book that I loved and I was really proud of and I really wanted people to see and I was so, so, so excited about. I just could not publish it because of forces literally beyond my control of just different things going on in the world around me or in my life. And that was something that I also, I've referred to this in other videos, but I just had to learn like, okay, <laughs> if there's anything I've learned from writing this book, it's that I am not in control of my life. And that's a good thing because there's a certain amount of peace and freedom that comes from acknowledging that we do not have control. The best experience I have found is just giving it over to God and watching him work it out in his plan and his time because it's so much better than like what I could have plotted out or imagined. Like that's yet another reason I love writing because he is the ultimate author of all of our stories. But some things that I did differently for Antioch's Daughter, once I finally did have a publishing date that really just worked out 
by God's grace. Um, for Jerusalem's Daughter, I just published it. For this book, I did pre-orders on the ebook, and um, that was the first time I'd ever done pre-orders. So that was stressful because I had to make sure that the documents were uploaded on time because when you do pre-orders, the docs have to be locked. Um, you can't make changes up to a certain amount of time before the actual release date because it has to process in the system before it gets sent to all of those Kindles and reading devices that have pre-ordered it. Another thing that was new for me with this book is that because I had done those pre-orders and a lot of people had shown interest in the book or purchased the book, I actually got to the number one new release in my category for the first time. I did not make number one with Jerusalem's Daughter. I did make top 10, but this one got to be the number one new release in the biblical fiction category. And that was like mind blowing. And, and then another kind of different thing is that I did not do a review team for this book. And miraculously, this book has reviews on Amazon. I don't know how, because I didn't ask anyone to do that. Thank you if you've written a review, by the way. But I did not do a review team. Again, I kind of learned my own limits. I've also been, I was also dealing with some health things at the time, and I've been dealing with chronic health issues uh, pretty much since before I picked published Jerusalem's Daughter, although I didn't know at the time of publishing Jerusalem's Daughter the extent of my chronic health issues and like the treatment and how to best like handle things. And I think that's a part of the reason that I became so vulnerable to anxiety and um, exhaustion during that period of my life. Um, when it came to publishing this book, truly I set it up for pre-orders and I gave it over to God because I was like, I don't know what this is going to look like. I, I know that I cannot physically do what I did for Jerusalem's Daughter again because I'll get burnt out and I will struggle again. So that was different. What I did instead was I actually reached out to a couple of different authors and I asked them to write endorsements. And I had never done this before. I've written endorsements for authors like Barbara M. Britton in Defending David and Ifueko Obomo for A Divine Romance, but I had never asked anyone for an endorsement. And it was funny because when Jerusalem's Daughter came out, I had a couple people reach out to me and they were like, why didn't you send me a copy of your book? I would have loved to have read it. And honestly, because I was just intimidated to ask, like I didn't want to ask people. Um, I was very nervous and a newbie writer for Jerusalem's Daughter. But with this book, I actually, I reached out to Barbara M. Britton and Ashton E. Doro and asked if they would be willing to write endorsements. And those endorsements ended up in the book. So it was just a lot more chill and low key and laid back. Um, and I just really gave it over to God. And that was, again, one of those things where I just got to watch him work through the story and see the kinds of things that he did for it. I'm just so grateful for both of those reviews and the experience I had with publishing that story. Um, something else that I did differently for publishing Antioch's Daughter. When I published Jerusalem's Daughter, I made several YouTube videos to be released concurrently with the book to kind of build hype for those YouTube videos. Uh, those ranged in length from like 5 to 15 minutes and they were very extensive and very time consuming for me to make. As opposed to making those larger scale YouTube videos, I did something that literally did not exist when Jerusalem's Daughter came out and I made a series of reels. And reels were a lot easier for me to make on Instagram um, just because they're shorter. They're only like 30 to 60 seconds. But um, that was another thing that was different. And again, going back to Jerusalem's Daughter, when I published that book, like I said earlier, I sent out all kinds of invitations to this big launch party I threw. I sold books. I did a signing. I had merch available to give away. There was a photo booth. There was cake. There was lunch and food and, and all kinds of things. And it was a really big party. It was really fun too because we did kind of it open house style. So different friends and family came and went throughout the day. And I had a lot of fun that day. Uh, but for Antioch's daughter, because we had just moved across the country with me and my husband. Oh, hi dog. That's my dog. Um, how long has she been there? Because we had just moved across the country for Antioch's daughter. We just did a small, simple meal with just close family and friends. And to me, that was almost more special because it was just very small group. Um, very like close, just very close people and, uh, just got to celebrate the story really. And take time to just in peace and quiet reflect on everything God had done and not get so lost in the hustle and bustle. So those were some of the ways that publishing my second book was different from publishing my first book. Some different things I experienced, different things I learned, and of course writing my third book is already proving to be even more different. So I've, I've just kind of learned to 
be content in every situation go with the flow always be open to change thank you guys so much for watching this beast of a video my name is jenna van maurick you can find out more information about me social media links website all of those things in this little pop-up over here and of course there will be more information on my books and links and all the things in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!